All right, we're back with more triple triad. We're going to talk about different types of starters this time, and then go through some games and sort of just talk through all the moves so you have a sense of what normal moves or normal play looks like throughout a game. So here, what's our starter pick is the question I ask. Um, it says here a description for a secure side. We're going to be more focusing on strong corners and weak corners, but we will discuss the secure sides eventually. Uh, the idea of a strong corner is its numbers outfacing or high enough that they cannot possibly take us. And a weak corner is the idea of a corner so weak it is easy for us to recapture either way. Remember, first turn will always have last turn. Therefore, having something easy to recapture is pretty helpful because we're going to get the final turn, the final opportunity to recapture things. Um, so, okay, let's look for safe moves. And the easiest way to check for safe moves is what is their mega card? What's their combined super card? So their highest number up is a 7, as you can see here. I figured out how to show my mouse in the recording, so now I can point to things. Uh, their highest number to the right is a 4. Their highest number down is a 6. And their highest number to the left is a 4. So we know they are weak left and right, but we will need a high up or down number to be safe. For instance, Elnoil, our top card, could go in 3, has a 7 down, which is strong enough that their 7 up can't beat it, and a 6 to the left is easily strong enough. Another example would be Biggs and Wedge, our second card, 6627, in 9, because its 6 up can't be beaten by their 6 down, and its 7 to the left is safe. It would also be safe in 7. It would have two 6s facing out, and those would be good enough, or even an 8 with three out facing sides, but all of them are safe. Um, Note, generally, if we were going to play safely, you might think, okay, we can play it in 8, that's a shockingly safe square. If we can do that, we should go for it. But actually, it opens up squares in 7 and 9, where they could have their 7 facing up, and it might give them safe opportunities. Well, if we play in 9, and they play next to it in 6 or 8, they're still going to be out facing two different directions. So it's, it's not necessarily true that if a card is really strong, we should use all its strength. We might want to use less than its maximal strength. But this card clearly should jump out at us. This is a very good card for this game because we have three different safe places it can start. How about our 5574? Well, the obvious place for it to be safe would be 1, and it is in fact safe. The 7 down is not going to be beaten, and the 5 to the right strong enough. It's also safe in 3 because the 4 to the left is safe, and much like the other card, this means it's safe in 2 as well because it's 4 to the left is safe, it's 5 to the right safe, and it's 7 down is always going to be safe, because 7 is the maximum number available at the moment. We don't have any safe moves with Cactuar, 6263, but we do have a safe corner with Forbidden, 6632, in 7. Now, we had one safe corner with Elnoil, three with Biggs and Wedge, three with Jim47N, whatever it's named, and one, uh, and one with Forbidden. So we might think these two cards are a little more useful. We might want to hold on to them and be more likely to play Elnoil or Forbidden. If we look at the values on the cards, it's pretty clear Elnoil is a stronger card overall, and starting with Forbidden in 7 makes a lot of sense. Use our weakest card that attains achieves a purpose, and Forbidden, the 6632, is our weakest card that we can play a safe corner with. So here, safe corner makes a lot of sense. So when I scroll down to the next position, Maybe do some thinking on your own, pause the video, think about it, and then we'll come back and talk about starters. But any safe starter is good here. Our hand is so much stronger than theirs. Um, all these moves are going to win. Okay, so maybe before you pause, if you haven't already, what are those stupid looking things on the board? Uh, those are elements. Uh, elements impact cards slightly. We can see there is an ice element in 1, a wind element in 2, 8, and 9. You'll also notice some cards of elements. Pez Dispenser has a rock. Uh, Malboro has a poison symbol. Fastidicolin F has another rock. Elveret has a wind symbol. I'm hovering over the cards, so hopefully you know which ones I mean. Now, if you play on one of these squares with a card that does not have the proper element, and not having the proper element also includes having no element at all. So, for instance, if we played our top card, Oil Boil, in any of these squares, it would have the wrong element and get minus one, which means all its numbers would go down one. So it would be, in fact, a 0, 7, 7, 3 on any of those squares. Now, if you have the right symbol, the only way to do so with the available cards is Elveret, 7834, which could go in 2, 8, or 9. It would get plus 1 to all its numbers and become an 8945. 
So that's how Elemental works. I hate it. It interacts badly with some rules we're going to get to later. But, you know. Uh, but it can be interesting, because except for Elvaret, it basically means these squares are just a minus one to any card around them. Which might not strike you as very important, but it is somewhat relevant to starters. For instance, if we play a corner here or here, one of the sides it faces is going to be weakened. So it is easier to find a safe corner in either of those two squares. But let's start properly, and what is our opponent's super card? They have a 7 up, an 8 to the right, a 7 down, and only a 5 to the left. So they are strongest to the right and weakest to the left. If we're looking for safe moves, uh, the obvious one, I think, is 7, 8, 3, 4, and 7. It's 7 up can't be beaten, and it's 8 to the right certainly can't be beaten, especially not with an elemental giving our opponent minus 1. So this is one safe move. Now, we could also consider looking at 3, because their 8 to the right will be weakened. It'll turn into only a 7, but we don't have good enough down values and left values. There's no safe corner here. So that's our only safe corner. But one might think... I don't want to use that card. Uh, it has a plus one in three different squares. This card is, you know, just our best card. I'd prefer not to waste it. So another type of starter is what I call the, the secure side. And the idea is to use our top card, Oil Boil, which will have an, F, an eight facing the center and either four or six. So for instance, if we put Oil Boil in 4, it is an 8 facing the middle, so nothing's ever going to overpower that. 8 is the highest number available. And our idea is anytime they go in 1 or 7, we have a card that fits in the other of 1 or 7, recapturing it with maximal outfacing value. And in this case, that paired card is Elvaret. So if we play 1, 8, 4, 8, and 4, anytime they go in 1 or 7, we play Elvaret, 7, 8, 3, 4, in the other of 1 or 7, it has an 8 facing out that's never going to be taken, and this, the oil boil will have an 8 facing out. That's never going to be taken either. We'll have two safe cards to their maximal of 1. Um, note in this case, because they're so weak going to the left, we could play oil boil in 4, intending to recapture it with this guy, uh, Gargantuan, I think is its name, because even a 6 to the right is going to be strong enough to never be taken, or even this guy. You know, we'll have lots of options to recapture while being safe, because they are weak to the left, and this game sort of directs the the whole thing by playing a card on the left towards where they are weak and might be a really appealing starter. And you might think, okay, what about the same move in six? And the hand is built to try to do the same move in six. But there's a problem. The uh, oil boil combines with gargantuan here. Gargantuan's five beats oil boil's four. The six beats the one. So oil boil in four, uh, six, gargantuan can go above it in three or below it in nine with a powerful eight that can't be beat either. However, elements screw it up. Problem is, there's an element in 9, so instead of being able to recapture from 9, the 5 gets minus 1, becomes a 4, and won't be able to recapture. So if we wanted to do a secure side starter, which is not a very common starter type, though in the rule set we're looking at it becomes a lot more so, um, 1848 in 4 is a very appealing starter, really trying to punish the other side's left weakness, and giving us easy safeguards. And all we have to do is hold on to Elvaret, or maybe one of these two cards, Gargantuan or a Shumi Tribe 6584, and be ready to play it above or below any time it's captured. Those cards will be safe, and we will make Oil Boil safe. So that's another type of starter. Uh, again, we did have a strong corner starter in 7834. So here's a third hand. Again, pause, maybe think about it. Sadly, Elemental's in play, but... You know, it gives you something new to think about. Sometimes it ruins squares that would otherwise be safe. So, okay, pause and think. All right, so their super card is 7 up top, 8 to the right, 8 down, and 6 to the left. So a little weak left and up, but pretty balanced in all directions. So one starter we might look at is Ifrit, 9628 and 9. But there's an element there, so it becomes an 8-7 corner instead of 9-8 and suddenly 7 can be beaten by their 8, so it's no longer safe. Um, the other strong corner that comes to mind is, of course, 2994 in 1, and this remains safe, and that would be a good starter, though we might want to hold on to a card this powerful. Here, though, I think a different move is very appealing. If you look at our hand, you'll notice there are four, two cards that are very good, our top two, two cards that are fine, our middle two, and one card that is garbage, red bat, the bottom card. 
And if we could get rid of the bottom card in a useful way, that would be great. And we should think, okay, rule of evens. We want a card to be vulnerable zero ways or two ways. And here we can have the most vulnerable two ways by playing red bat in the square one. On the fire symbol, these ones become zeros. This is the most recapturable card possible to play because it has two zeros out facing. It will be so easy for us to recapture. Anytime they play in one of two or four, we can recapture from the other possibly with our top card, Quasicaudal 2994, which will have outfacing nines from either square and be untouchable. So I think this is a nice example of when we have a weak card, finding a way to use it in a useful way. Early in the game, we're not trying to capture immediately. We're trying to set up easy securings, and this is an easy way to do so. So in fact, the 6112 might have more value because it can be weaker than a stronger card. Okay, uh, so looking at this hand, we have options of every type possibly available. Um, what's their super card? This is always the first question, and I believe they have an 8 in every direction. They have an 8 up, an 8 to the right, an 8 down, and an 8 left. So the only way we're going to have a safe corner is if an element happens to give them minus 1, because we don't have any 8-8 eight, eight corners. And it does not look like that is feasible here. So a next question might be, all right, we don't have any strong corners. Can we do the secure side thing? And the hand was in fact built to do a secure side thing. The idea was to put seven, two, eight, five, and two, and then five, seven, eight, five can recapture it from either one or three, and they will both have the maximal eights facing down, so it will be safe. Uh, the seven beats the five, the five beats the two. So the idea was to put seven, two, eight, five, and two. But what's the problem? The problem is this element in three. So if they go in 1, say with 2884, they want to play a safe card of their own, and we recapture in 3 with 5785, we do recapture, but our 8 down becomes a 7, and then they have a chance to take that with their 8 up. So that starter is also ruined. So in this kind of position, where we don't have a strong corner, we don't have a secure side, um, some people would bail out to chucking a card in 5, because this is kind of the least committal square, I would tend to prefer, at least on this rule set, a weak corner. So something like 5, 3, 7, 6, and 7 is pretty easy for us to recapture. Maybe not something like 6, 6, 2, 7, which is our other weakest card in 1, its weakest square, because it's 6 to the right, is pretty hard for us to take. Um, but it's a pretty tough hand to find a good move with here. And I would not blame anyone who really uh, struggled to find something. I do think I would chuck this card. It has the most redundant values. Um, we have cards with higher value to the left. We have cards with higher value down. Uh, it already isn't very weak right or up. And I would try not to chuck something that was our highest value in a given direction. Uh, another thing to note is by playing it in 7, where it's weakest, we could possibly recapture with Elveret and 8 on a Wind Elemental, and it would get a plus 1 and be very strong. Uh, so that would be a pleasant thing to set up. But this is a tough situation, and often weak corners are the best thing you can do in difficult situations. So okay. Uh, let us move on to the next article, and just sort of play out some games. Um, I haven't actually looked at these in advance, I wrote these a while ago, so my analysis now might feel a little different than my analysis then did. But we're going to be blue to move. Uh, blue will be listed first in the score, so it is 5 to 5 blue's turn. You can see that down here. And the question is, how should we start? So per usual, let's start by checking their mega card which I keep calling different things, and I've called their super card and mega card. So they have a 7 up, 6 to the right, 7 down, 5 to the left. They've been weak uh, left and right a lot. I think FF8, the cards, tend to be much better up and down than left and right. Um, so they're particularly weakest to the left. They only have a 5 there. So if we look for safe moves, again, you can always pause and start thinking about it. Weirdly, our 6267 doesn't actually have a safe square, despite having multiple corners that look appealing because their up-down is strong, but our 7543 has a very safe corner in 7. They only have 5s to the left, and their 7s down aren't enough to take it. That is our only safe corner, and I hope that was the starter you found. Alright, 
they played 7, 6, 5, 3, and 4. Now, our first question is, is their move safe? We never have to worry about securing our card because it is already safe. So is their move safe? Well, nothing can beat a 7 going down, but we can take this 6. And they won't be able to take this 7, so we will achieve a second safe card. It seems very hard to turn that down. So while there are other moves to consider, for instance, 3, 7, 3, 6, and 1, very good move, 7 facing out, they'll never beat that. 4, 5, 5, 6, and 1, 5 facing out, they will never beat that either. Uh, there are multiple, you know, appealing moves. I think 6, 2, 6, 7, and 5 is kind of interesting because you're just curious what they're doing. Uh, why did they put this card out that doesn't follow the rule of evens? It only has one vulnerability, not 0 or 2. And so I like trying to punish that, though playing safe moves in 1 is also very appealing. All right, so I did play the safe move in 1 here, um, and they blocked in their card from 5. So we have two safe cards, and they have one secure card. So we definitely have an advantage. And the question should be how to deal with this. And again, safety. Uh, so our 4, 5, 5, 6 is a 5 to the right. So if it goes in either 2 or 8, it's going to be safe. And we should probably prefer the one that captures, not because capturing is that important to us, we like safety and securing, but because forcing them to respond to our capture, they will have to take it back at some point, and they just might not have the cards to do so. Here they cannot capture this card back from 6, they can only capture it from 8, and they only have two options to do so. So it's a forcing move, so I like the looks of 4, 5, 5, 6, and 2. We played it, and they replied by recapturing an 8, leveling the score 5, 5. And here should definitely pause and find the win. A win. There are multiple wins here. So safety and securing should matter first, which means I think a lot of people's instincts is to go in one of the squares that capture. And there are wins, there is a win in the capturing squares, but going here could be just as good too, securing one of our cards. It is already safe, so we don't need to, but the two winning moves that spring to mind for me are 6 2 6 7 in 9. It captures, putting us up 6 4, so they must capture to not lose. Their only capture is 5 5 7 4 and 6, making it 5 5. And our 4 4 7 2 will capture their card to win 6 4. And the other way is to play in the other order. 4 4 7 2 in 3 is completely safe with the 7 down, and it's 5 5. And we know we'll capture on the last turn because we have a 7 to the left which can beat this card's 5 or this card's 5, so we know we will win at least 6-4. Neither move wins. All right, so I decided to explore a different move. So we had talked about how after, in this position, we had the option to go in 1 safely, or we could go in 5. And here, I looked at going in 5, and if they reply in 6. The cards are a little off-center, you'll notice. I got better at um, setting up positions. Uh, so... It's blue to move, where do we go? As always, safety and securing. Uh, this rule set is not that complicated. Uh, we could capture things. If we can capture things they can't recapture, that would be great. But for instance, 4, 4, 7, 2, and 3 captures 6, 5, 4, 5, but they can recapture from below. We're not, it's not safe, we're not securing anything, it's not safe itself. 4, 4, 7, 2, and 2 is more appealing because they cannot recapture 6, 2, 6, 7. They don't have a 7 up to use from 8. So that move actually should appeal to us more. Um, another move that should appeal is 3, 7, 3, 6, and 1. It's just safe. We just have three safe cards. They don't have safe cards. We'll take some at the end and we'll probably win. Uh, another move is just anything else safe. So 3, 7, 3, 6, and 8 is also safe. Note, though, that they can go in 9, and while they can't take us, it is a secure card on its own, and so we would be surrendering a square for a secure play for them. Uh, that does win, you know, this is a good move, but... Um, and the idea of why it wins is when they take the square in 9, we can play 4, 5, 5, 6, and 1, which is safe, and they can't capture anything, and then we've got the 7 down on our final card, which will take one of the 6s to give us a 6-4 win. So we have lots of options here, but the moves that should come to us first are safe and secure moves, not necessarily captures. Captures should only interest us if they also secure. So the only capture here that should really appeal at all is 4, 4, 7, 2, and 2. But I think other moves like 3, 7, 3, 6, and 8, or 3, 7, 3, 6, probably in 1, are uh, at least as appealing.
All right, so I used a 4, 4, 7, 2, and 3 as an example. It does seem a weaker move, but it does still look good enough because we've left these two squares open and these two squares open, and both of them are going to deal with each other left and right, right? After they play in either of these squares, we will play one of our cards in the other. After they play in these either of these two squares, we will again play a card in the paired square, and we have cards with much better side-to-side -side value than they do. We have a 6 and a 7 and a 6 and a 5, and they have at best 5s. So it's going to be pretty easy for, easy for us to capture whatever they do. Uh, but, as it says here, there are ways for them to hold the tie. Because they do have these captures, right? We haven't secured either of these cards, and it would have been better to make a safe move. So they can play in two, and they'll make it 5-5. Five, five. We'll take them. But then they'll be able to play here. So for instance, 3-5-5-5, three, 3-5-5-5. Five, 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 three, five, five, five. Here makes it 5-5. Five, five. We take them, but we have to use our card with better side-to-side -side value to take them, putting us up 6-4, and then they can play 6-5-6-5 six, five, six, five in 9, capturing here to make it 5-5 five, five again, and we will not be able to capture anything with our remaining card. So it turns out by forcing us to have high rightward value twice, our 7 will have it once, but our 5 won't. So this move, the move that didn't secure, that didn't make safety, was substantially weaker than moves that did. All right. Uh, what are we going to now? Okay, so I think in this one, from the opening position, another starter I was discuss I mentioned, I must have mentioned, I really should have done my uh, work rereading re these before going in, was the idea of a secure side. And 4, 5, 5, 6 in 6 has a 6 facing the middle. They have nothing that can overpower that. Their highest is a 6, which doesn't. And pairing it with 6, 2, 6, 7 up here which can go in 3 or 9 with a 7 outfacing. So anytime they capture, we can recapture with high outfacing. So I think we're uh, starting a new position from there. And the question is, what should we do? And we have two good choices here. Uh, one is to do the plan. They went in 9, so we can go in 3. We'll have two numbers high outfacing. We'll have two safe cards. They, in fact, won't have any. And the other is to play 3, 7, 3, 6, and 8. We're not excited because we capture, we're excited because we secure. This will be locked in as ours. Um, we could also play 3, 7, 3, 6, and 5, capturing this, but it won't be secure at all. This is a bad move. We're not doing capturing just for the sake of capturing. I think that's a mistake. Of these two moves, uh, I think one thing to note is 3, 7, 3, 6 here doesn't really follow the rule of evens. It's 3 up is easy for us to retake, but it's 6 to the left is not. Therefore, if we go there and they go at some point in 5, it might be tricky for us to recapture. So I think the simpler move to play here is 6, 2, 6, 7, and 3, when we will have two safe cards, both with really high outfacing numbers to the left that they can never take. And because we still threaten to play Imp in 8, capturing their card in 9, they're kind of going to be forced to block 8, and that might give them more stuff for us to attack. So yeah, we went in 3, and the computer program... Uh, went in 7, which is an odd move because we just have this capture. But we do have choices, right? Because we want safe and secure cards. So if we played three, th 7, 3, 6, and 8, we would secure the card in 9, but we wouldn't be safe ourselves. If we play 7, 5, 3, 4, and 8, we would be safe because we have a 7 going up, but we would not take their card. Both moves are reasonable. Um, the reason their move makes some sense, actually, though, uh, is because it is a safe move. We can't beat their 7, we can't beat their 6. Uh, so the red player must have thought 8 is dangerous. They don't have a, a good card to put in 8 that we can't start attacking easily. So they're just going to play their safest move. And that seems to make sense to me. So the question is, which do we want to play? Do we want to play Imp in 8 and secure a card? Or do we want to play Hexadragon, 7, 5, 4, 3, and 8, and have a 7 facing up and have a safe card? Of these two choices, I think the most straightforward move is usually the forcing move, right? If we play 7, 5, 4, 3, and 8, all our cards are safe. That's great. So we're theirs. But they can play anywhere they want. Well, if we play 3, 7, 3, 6, and 8, securing the card in 9, they really have to go in 5, trying to secure our card in 8, or they're in trouble. And by forcing them into a particular square, we don't have to calculate as much. So I would be drawn towards this move. And they do have a tie here, um, but they had a tie. They had ties against the other option as well. Uh, so I, I lead to this position. 
where they have recaptured with Iron Giant in 5, we have taken back with Deathclaw in 2, and the question is, red to move and tie, it is 4-6, so red must capture, and the answer is 5-5-7-4-1, five, five, capturing the card in 2, and blue can't capture anything final turn for a tie. So what about if we had played 7-5-4-3 in 8? Now red has to find a tie. And it's kind of tricky to find ties, so I'm just going to scroll down because I solved it earlier, uh, and I am lazy. But every move in one or five ties here. Interesting. So moves in five, we sort of lead to similar positions to this, while moves in one, for instance, five, five, seven, four, and one, it's almost safe, right? It's only vulnerable from two. But if we take it from two with the imp, they can play something like Iron Giant in 5, capturing the Imp, and 4472 is nothing it can capture the final turn. Uh, so you get a bunch of ties here. Uh, so okay, let's go to a new game. So we're going to be blue again, and the question is, how should we start? Now, our first thing is, what's their super card? Uh, 7 up, uh, 3 to the right, f 6 down, 7 left. So... Pretty good in all directions except to the right. We might want to go on the right. Do we have any safe moves? Uh, we do not, in fact. Uh, 6632 is the most obvious card to be safe, going in 7, but they have a 7 to the left, making it unsafe. Do we have any secure sides? Do we have any of these pairs where we have two numbers with high values facing towards the middle, where one can recapture the other from both corners easily? We do not. Therefore, my instinct would be to look for a weak corner. And my other instinct would be I would like to play on the right side of the board to punish their weaknesses right. And the weakest corner that satisfies this is 1541 in 9. I think this is a great move. Uh, the card's very easy. Every one of our cards can recapture it from both adjoining squares. And we somewhat direct the game to the right where they are weakest. So I would play 1, 5, 4, 1, and 9 here 100% of the time. And I'm sure that's the, yeah, that's the move that was made. So okay, we trail 4, 6, but we now have the first option to secure. Um, we could also, if we captured from 5, we could make 8 safe. But that card would be vulnerable lots of ways. I think it is more straightforward to play in 6. Just secure a card. And once again, we should be thinking rule of evens. Can we play a safe card? Can we play a card with really high outfacing values? And our highest outfacing values we could play in 6 is the 5325 with a 5 facing up and a 5 facing left. But they can take that. They have a 6 down. So if we don't have a card that is safe two ways, I would rather a card that is safe zero ways. I want to follow the rule of evens. Therefore, 4243, our weakest card that accomplishes our goal of securing the card in 9. We can recapture the 3 easily. And in fact, double capture if they let us go in 5, and we have a card that can recapture the 4 facing up. Therefore, I would play 4 2 4 3 in 6. Alright, our opponent replied 1 3 3 5 in 5. Uh, note, they didn't even have enough power to overcapture our 3 because they had nothing to the right. They could have captured from 3, taking our Caterchipler 4 2 4 3, but then we go in 5, we'd secure Caterchipler. And we take Jelli, which would then be safe, the 3217. So they decided to save Jelli. Jelli is now safe for them. But we have two safe cards, or two, one secure and one, uh, one we can secure this turn by playing in three. We should play something in three that is safe. Note, their highest value to the right is a one. So any card we play will be safe. So we should use our weakest card that accomplishes our goal. Now, once we play here, the game will be directed very rightward. All the taking will be to the right. There will be no taking really to the left, because that will be facing into the wall over here. So I would keep the 6632, I would keep the 3555, and I would play the card that has the least rightward value. So 5325 and 3 makes a lot of sense. Alright, they replied with 2144 and 2. Note, they couldn't take anything, so they didn't have a lot of other choices. There are two wins to find. So if you'd like to find them, now would be a good time to pause. All right, the really obvious one is 3555 five, five in 1. We take the card in 2, making it 6-4. They must take back with the 7153, and we can take with the 6632, and we win 6-4. Uh, 
because they made it 5-5, and we take to win 6-4. Now, we do have another win here, which I am not immediately seeing. So let's just go through the moves, because while I've had my instincts have drawn me to moves that we've gone through so far, uh, when you don't see the move immediately, just calculate everything. So we know 3-5-5-5-1 five, 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 five and one is a win. What about 6-6-3-2-1? Six, six, we go up 6-4, they recapture with 7-1-5-3, and our 3-5-5-5 five, five, five doesn't take anything, tie. All right, these cards are called Forbidden and Triface. I'll be calling them that, because that's a little easier to say. So we have one win and one. What about four? We could put three uh, Triface in four, but they would go in one, and we can recapture from seven, but we can't take two things. So that's just going to be a tie. Ah, so the win, the other win is 6-6-3-2 six, six, in 4, which makes sense. We go up 6-4. Um, the reason it didn't jump out to me is because our, our tri-face cannot recapture it from both sides. But they cannot recapture, or either side, but they cannot take it from above. So if they go in 1, we go in not, uh, 7, and we're still just up 6-4, so we win. And if they go in 7, capturing our card, which they must do to make it 5-5, five, five, tri-face in 1 will capture the card in 2, and we win 6-4. Here's another just position, I guess. It's blue to move. Um, it's 5-5. Five, five. Where's the win? And you should pause and try to find a win. So we have three moves that secure a card, right? So our candidate moves should be 4-2-4-3 four, four, and 8, 3-5-5 five, five, uh, tri-face in 9, or caterpillar in 9, right? Because either move in 9 secures the card in 6, and Caterpillar in 8 captures to give us a 6-4 lead, but uh, secures the card in 5. Now, either of our moves in 9 can be met with 3-2-1-7 in 8, and we will not be able to capture anything from 7 on our final turn. That's going to be a tie, so our attention should turn to 4-2-4-3 four, four, in 8. Captures the card in 5, so we go up 6-4. Now, they can recapture this card, but our 3 5, five, five can take it back from either 7 or 9. Triface can overpower Caterpillar either direction. So we will go up 6-4, they can recapture, but it doesn't matter because we'll recapture our own card and keep a 6-4 lead. Okay, we got the start of a new game. We're blue to move, and we should go through the normal things. What's their super card? 8 up, 8 right, 8 down, 7 left. Slight weakness to the left, but we're basically going to need an 8-8 eight eight corner if we want a safe card. Do we have an 8-8 corner? We sure do. 3-2-8-8 uh, eight, eight can go in 3, and so we have a safe card we can play. Do we have any other types of starters? Well, we actually do have a pretty good setup for a secure side starter. Uh, a card that is very strong either vertically, horizontally, and very weak the other is often going to be a good uh, side starter. So this 2-8-2-8 we could put in 4, and the 5-8-7-2 can recapture it from 1 or 7, with a high outfacing value that they can't take. We could also put it in 6, and the 3288 would be able to recapture it from both sides. With a high enough outfacing value, it would be safe. Which one would you prefer? Well, we already know the 3288's really good because they can't take it. It's already a safe corner. So if I was going to play the 2828 uh, in either 4 or 6, I would play it in 4. So I would pair it with the 5872 and let the 3288 already be excellent in its corner later. So I like 2828 and 4, though you could also play the uh, strong corner in 3. Alright, we started with 2828 and 6. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, apparently I thought this was more appealing. Uh, I don't know why. Um, anyways. Uh, so they have played in three. Can we capture them? Yes. So uh, again, we have two choices. We can play three, two, eight, eight, and three when we are in nine when we will have the cards in six and nine safe, or we could play five, eight, seven, two, and two when we will take their card. And note, despite having a high seven, our card is weak in two directions. We can beat the down seven with an eight, and of course we can beat the leftward too. Uh, so both these moves make lots of sense. And at this point, we're not trying to calculate out whole games. We're just saying, what are the logical moves to make? And the logical moves, and the only two logical moves, are 3, 2, 8, 8, and 9, and 5, 8, 7, 2, and 2. And if either of those moves were your instinct here, we're doing good. Okay. 
So we played 3, 2, 8, 8, and 9, and they secured their card in 2, which makes a lot of sense. We could take it, and then we'd secure a card. So they secured it first. Now we can play in either, we can play in 1, and if we have a high enough down facing value, that will be safe. We do not have a high enough down facing value. Um, but we might also think to play in five. Notice though, it doesn't. It does capture their card, but it doesn't really do anything else. Um, it does secure our card in six, but it was already safe. Is that such a big deal? So I think the big thing to notice is where could our opponent play safely? Not just where can we play safely, but what squares do we want to block for our opponent? We don't have a great card for one, but they do. Five, six, eight, four with its eight down will be great in one. So I think it is worth blocking one just so they don't have it. So a move like 5, 8, 7, 2, and 1 is really logical to me. And that is in fact what we played here. They responded in 5, and it is blue to move and win. So, solve. Yeah, I mean, we want to make the move that secures, that protects our vulnerable 7. So very logical is 8, 5, 7, 1, and 4 secures the card in 1, takes the card in 5, which is now safe with its 8 down, we would lead 6-4. They have to recapture 8-4-3-7 if they don't want to lose immediately in 7, and our 6-7-3-6 and 8, the 6 will capture the 4, and we win 6-4. As always, if I go too fast, just slow down and look at it for a bit, and, you know, play out the moves in your head and try to really envision what's going on there. Okay. This time, they blocked with a different card in 5. We just looked at if they blocked with 5, 6, 8, 4. Now, they blocked with 8, 4, 3, 7, which actually means our card in 1 is safe because they gave up their 8 facing up. So we don't actually need to block there. And we could look at different squares. And here, the move that jumps out at me is 6, 7, 3, 6, and 8. Capture the weaker side so the stronger side is facing out. That puts us up 6, 4. They must capture... The only thing they can capture that captures our leftward 6 or the 7 is with 1, 8, 6, 8, and whichever of 4 or 7 they play it in, our 8, 5, 7, 1 is going to dominate vertically and capture them back. So we go up 6, 4, they can tie it 5, 5 in either of the two squares, and then we capture to go up 6, 4. All right, this one says not blue to move and win, so I'm assuming this one, in fact, is a tie. Now... Looks like it probably is. For instance, we probably want to block 5, right? We have a 2 facing down, so we'd like to save that. So what could we do? Well, either card goes there. The 6, 7, 3, 6 captures, putting us up 6, 4, but we don't care so much about capturing when it's not securing. And they could reply with 5, 6, 8, 4, and 7. They'd capture back. It would be 5, 5. And our 8, 5, 7, 1 captures nothing on its final turn. It does overpower the card in 5, but that was already ours. The other way to block 5 is 8, 5, 7, 1, and 5. This card secures the card in 2 and is safe itself, so that seems very appealing. But again, they can play either of their cards in 7 and our card in 8. It's 6 left is not enough to beat their 6 or 8, right? So we're going to have another tie there. Okay. Uh, it says red's move here. It should say blue's move, presumably, because they just went. Um, but as I just saw in my comment... A very natural move here is 3, 2, 8, 8, and 6, both capturing and being a safe card itself. The capturing is not a big deal, but having a safe card is a pretty big deal. Um, then I go through recaptures. I'm going to give a link to this article so you can explore it if you want. I think I am um, done going through it for now, but you can keep going through positions and keep finding ties and wins as we explore how this game plays out. All right. Let's go back to starters, because I think they are an interesting thing to talk about. It is blue's move. Now, the highest number is an 8, right? So any 8-8 eight, eight corner is just going to be safe. Both our hands are all 8-8 eight, eight corners, which means everyone on every turn can make a safe move. And it was so sad when people on the site where this was played competitively would play rule sets like this that allowed 8-8 eight, eight corners that were played on levels where the maximal corners could be played. Because no one with half a brain is ever going to lose this game with either color. This is just going to be a tie every time. And the idea would be, you put up games like this, you pick your 8-8 hand that is never going to lose, and you hope you're playing someone who just started playing, or who has, doesn't have the card collection, they don't have any 8-8s yet, 
and you're just going to beat them because your 8-8s eight are never going to be taken, and if they have weaker cards, you're going to be able to take them. And so any of the strong corners here is a good move. It's all going to be ties. It is very trivially going to be a tie because every move is going to be safe. You know, 2 8 8 4 and 1. They go 8 5 3 8 and 9. Both are safe. You go 8 8 4 4 and 7. Safe. They go wherever they want. It's all going to be safe. So okay. Uh, I think that completes this one. Uh, next time we're going to move on to what happens when rules are added. Um, we have these main concepts. Let's go over our main concepts again. We want safety, we want to secure as much as possible, and we don't care that much about captures. We're going to start caring more about captures as time goes on, um, and you should always consider captures, but we don't care that much about captures. Safety and securing matter a lot more. The rule of evens is really useful. If you can't have a card that is strong two ways, uh, especially at the start, consider a card that is strong zero ways, that is vulnerable two ways an even number of ways. A useful way to check uh, what direction they're good in is to make the super card look at uh, their best number in each direction, combine them to make the best card available, and see what it is, and, you know, learn about what their directional strengths are that way. And, yeah, so we're going to start adding rules, uh, same plus, plus wall, same wall. Uh, these all change what captures are available. And because more captures are going to be available, the concept of safety is kind of going to disappear. And instead, what's going to really matter is securing cards and preventing the opponent from securing cards. And that may sound like it makes the game simpler. Uh, it certainly does not. Um, having securings be more important, having uh, captures be more available, makes the game subtler and more positional in nature. And I hope I can explain the jump well enough that it can be easily understood and the accompanying concepts, because there are going to be a lot of them, can be broken down fundamentally. All right. Cheers.